Congratulations are in order, Mercs. You've made it into All Class Academy. This is J Dub. Let's get into the episode. Okay, first and foremost, at the top of this episode, I want to explain what All Class Academy is. All Class Academy is the YouTube series I wish I had when I started playing TF2. What I'm going to do is roll up a lot of the things I've learned in my years of playing Team Fortress 2 and really break it down into pieces you can use to improve your game right away. What you're joining in Team Fortress 2 is of course the video game The Shooter, but you're also getting connected to a huge community that has a ton of different members, different areas, different kinds of ways people connect to the game. That means there are people who are competitive e-gamers. That means there are people who create artwork, who do cosplay. That means there's a community for people who trade. There are whole trade servers set aside for this kind of stuff. So you may be introduced to the game as the shooter, as the casual match that we all know and love. But don't be afraid to take a look in some of the other community areas and figure out what you like to do with TF2. This game has been around for over a decade. And for video games, that is a rarity. And the only reason why it exists is because of this huge, talented community. All Class Academy is my contribution. Me, personally, I'm a career IT guy, so computer things are what I do. I'm not really a YouTuber, but I had to give back to this Team Fortress 2 creative community that has given me so much for the years. So, let's talk about what we're going to do in Session 1. Let's get you connected to the full version of the game. Now, if you're a real first-time player, you may have noticed you don't have the ability to use your microphone or voice chat effectively. That's because you have what's considered a free-to-play account. You'll see people in the chat typing F2P, meaning free to play. What you have to do is upgrade to a premium account. Now to do that, you're going to need to buy something out of the Manco store. And I get it, this game is a decade old and they want you to spend money on it day one just to use the most basic features. But let's not let that stop us from getting connected to what's probably the most video game the most community you can get for under a dollar. And I'm gonna show you how to make that under a dollar. All right, let's get your premium account set up. So fire up Team Fortress 2, then you're gonna to wanna to click on Manco Store, and you're gonna to wanna to click on items at the top. Uh, these first few items are from the marketplace. You wanna buy from the Manco Store. So sort for the cheapest. And if you page over, you'll start to see the Manco items that don't say on market. Uh, these are all a random assortment of cheap items, but you want to buy two specific items that will help you get the most bang for your buck. Now, the first one you could buy is a Man vs. Machine Tour of Duty ticket. That's a little bit more advanced for a first-time player, so we're going to skip that. And we're going to buy the ever-popular Backpack Expander. It's going to give you more slots in your inventory for holding more items. Or you can sell this item pretty much right away on the marketplace and recoup some of that initial dollar that you spent. So we're going to say no to this um, community map maker support. We're just trying to spend the absolute minimum in this demo. It's going to take us out to our Steam wallet. I've got a little cash left in there. So I'm going to go ahead and buy the item. Okay, and here it is, my backpack expander. It's going to give me 100 extra slots, so okay. Now let's go back and take a look at this item in my inventory. I'm going to click on inventory, and my backpack, and this little new icon at the bottom shows me where that item is, and here it is. Now, I can sell this item right away, or I can use it to actually expand my backpack. And I think we're gonna show you crafting first. So we're gonna hang on to this one and not sell it right away. But that's your first Manco store purchase and you now have a premium account. Congrats. Let's get your audio set up. In Team Fortress 2, you're gonna to wanna to click on options. You're gonna to wanna to take a look at your keyboard 
configuration under communication settings my communications is bound to V so I just have to hit V hold it down for a split second and talk into the mic to chat with my team also text chat is bound to U and Y two characters I use a lot you can set these to whatever keys you want under audio you can configure the game volume you can configure the music volume just find the right balance for what lets you hear the game now you're going to want to click under voice and be sure you've enabled voice chat and you can set your own mic volume and you can set the volume of your teammates coming in to your headset or out of your display or your speakers apply that and click OK. You're going to want to play around with these settings to find out what sounds best in your gaming setup. But after you find those settings, just lock them in and you're good to go. Voice chat has been enabled, you've configured your audio, and you're ready to start sharing with your team. Good communication is essential in playing at a high level in Team Fortress 2. Virtually every map has a specific name for a location or a position inside of the game. And the only way to really pick those up is to play with other players and hear and remember the names they're calling these different locations. Whether they're calling it the house or whether they're calling it the shed or they're referring to a choke point on the map. Pay attention and tune in and it will make you a better communicator. One bit of advice you can take away while you're learning these locations is what makes an effective call. If you can give your team information about what enemy players are approaching them, whether it's a group of soldiers, whether it's a heavy and a medic combo, whether you've seen a spy, it's important to call out the class, how many you've seen, and who's in the group. This is especially effective when you have a defensive position set up and you need to hold that position against an offensive push. Also on offense, being able to run into the defense and know what's there because of good calls exponentially increases your ability to meet and overcome that obstacle, whatever's there. Now, for example, a bad call. There are pushing across the bridge. That call on its own tells your team nothing about who's coming, how many there are, and whether to take this serious or not. A better call for that situation. There's a heavy medic combo on the bridge and there's a soldier with them. Now that call tells the team how much damage is coming across the bridge, what kind of support is coming, and how fast they're going to get there. After you've played Team Fortress 2 a while, you learn the different class movement speeds. And where you hear a class is seen or called, it lets you know how long it's going to be before they reach your location if you're playing on defense. So all of these different things you're going to pick up as you play the game, but be sure to communicate early and often with your teammates. Voice chat is essential to combating really good spies. Spy players thrive on taking action when no one's looking. And if you're getting backstabbed and you're not sharing with your team where that happened, what kind of knife the spy stabbed you with, and that bit of information, you're on the spy's team because you're withholding information, keeping your team in the dark. If you see a spy, give a good spy call. There is a spy then say the type of class you see them disguised as, where they're going, where they're headed. Don't give the bad spy call where you say, I just got stabbed. It doesn't say where, it doesn't say with what, it doesn't tell the team what the spy could be disguised as. Or if you yell, there's a spy, you don't tell the location, you don't tell your team the vital information they need to combat this spy. Another really useful call to make is to let your team know when you've done damage to an opponent. Let's say you've gone head to head with any class, a soldier, a demo, what have you, and you've done damage to them. And while you're respawning, you get to see where their health is at. Let your team know. 
Is it a full health heavy? Is it a scout that's on 10 health? Let them know what the opposition is and whether or not they should try to chip down that opponent or fall back to a defensive position. You have now been invested with the awesome power of the microphone. Now that you have this power, you have some responsibilities. And I'm just going to quickly go over a few housekeeping notes that makes the mic effective. Uh, Number one, check your mic volume. I know it was okay the last round you played, but in between that, maybe you recorded audio for your classes or something else, and you jump back in the game, your volume could be off. Get feedback from the rest of the team. Number two. Don't spam music into your mic. Eye of the Tiger does pump you up and get you at least 10 more kills per round, but everyone else doesn't need to hear Eye of the Tiger while you're playing. Number three, don't abuse the other players in the game. You might be new to the game now, or you might be a veteran, but someone is just getting started and they have no idea how the game works. So try your best to be patient and coach those players along rather than abuse them through the mic. Number four, don't rage into your mic. We've all raged while playing games and it's going to happen again in the future. But there's no need to share that with the team. It disrupts communication. It can lead you to you being muted by other players so it makes your calls less effective because less teammates hear you because they have you on mute number five do not do not actually call for the medic if you don't use your medic call on your keybinds and you actually say it into the microphone the medic doesn't get direction the distance from the call and it doesn't raise the i need help medic icon over your head that your medic is going to use to locate you so if you speak into your mic and you say hey medic i need heals that voice just enters their headset from omniscient and they have no idea where you're at it's the least effective call and number six be gracious mute before you boot This is to cover the case where someone is raging into their mic, they're spamming Eye of the Tiger, or they're coming after another player. Try muting that player before you boot that player, and they could just be having an off day. But it's always best to just exclude them from your audio stream if they're a nuisance. Alright, if you stuck with the video this far, you should be mic'd up and suited for sound, so I hope to hear you around the server. This is also my first video that actually has a part 2, so I'm contractually obligated to say like and subscribe for more, but if you found this, you know where to come back and get more. I'll see you on the next episode.